delighted to introduce today's speaker, Rachel Thompson, who I met um, when she won West Fife Young Entrepreneur Competition two years ago. Um, and she's really made real progress since then. She's come on loops and bounds, and I actually heard her speak at an event that myself and Sean and a few others were at on Friday night in Edinburgh. Um, Start of Summit we were at in November, they're tracking people throughout the year. Um, I know that Shona and Rachel have been tracked and um, they asked Rachel to do a, a quick little sort of five minutes and she was absolutely fantastic. And the guy sitting next to me sort of says, how old is she? Do you know how she's 17 type thing? And he was absolutely blown away. So there's a bit of pressure there for you, Rachel. Um, so I'm delighted to introduce Rachel. She's got a great story already. She's very switched on and very inspiring. So um, and without further ado, I'll pass over to Rachel. Thank you very much. Thanks, Callum. That was like half my introduction, but there we go. Um, I was going to tell you a story about how I got to where I am now. Um, my Young Entrepreneur Competition was two years ago, and I was actually still in school. And I heard about it because I, there was a bit of trouble. I was doing maths at higher, and um, I'm not a very mathematical minded person. So I was kind of like, I'll do anything to be able to switch because I still wanted to do five exams because I thought, I know I can. So I was like, please let me do business because I understand most of the, what it's about. And then it, it's memory and I can dedicate my time to learning chunks about business and that'll be great. So reluctantly, they let me switch and I said, look, I promise I'll pass, it'll be fine. So I had, that was November time. So that's four or five months till the actual final exam. So I was, I was ready, I was like, I'll do everything business, business is gonna be my life. And then the teacher was like, oh, there's a competition. Um, there's a, a day out, do you want to come? There's a big buffet and it'll be wonderful and business people are gonna tell you their stories and we'll put the bus on and I was like, sign me up. I, I want to do that. So we went along and it was really good and it was just a kind of big hall and it was full of people that have done business that are currently doing business or students like myself that are kind of going along for the day out of school really and then um, over the lunch they had a, a forum and it's a competition and they said if you've got an idea tell us what it is and you could win a business funded prize package to help you start it up so I went away and I was like I'm, I'm going to come up with something this this is my chance I'll, I'll do it and it'll be great and then um, I didn't really have much of an idea at the time but um, I thought, well, what would be different? What can I do that I love? And I really wanted to do art. Art's kind of my thing, and I really enjoy making things. So I thought if I could do something with art, then make it a business, then I can love my job forever kind of thing. <coughs> that they always kind of tell you that's the way to go. So my idea at the time was just to do T-shirts with motivational designs to boost teenage self-esteem and kind of give a positive impression of young people but um so i brought some t-shirts to show you actually this one says let inspiration grow and um this other one i like this one because i play violin so that's where it came from is violins not violence <laughs> um so it was just kind of quirky things like that that i fancy doing and um, they thought it was a great idea. My presentation was quite different because I kind of thought I need to make an impact, but I also really wanted to look professional because I was 16 at the time for the competition and the competition age was 16 to 25, I think. So I was on the lower end. So I kind of, I went back to Tree of Knowledge for advice because they'd helped me and I'd done work experience with them and they were like, if you ever need anything, come back to us and we'll help you out. And they said, you need to make an impact. You need to do something really different. So because my idea was about changing perceptions and making young people look good, um, I borrowed my dad's hoodie and I had trainers on and just my school skirt. I had one of my t-shirts underneath, but I had the hood up and I kind of, I said to the organiser, I want to introduce myself. And he was like, all right then. Um, so I came stomping on, I was like, and everyone kind of, the whole room went silent. I thought, well, I have no choice now. This has to work. Because everyone kind of thought, what's she doing? So I was on last, and it was four guys that had gone before me, and they'd had, like, the suits on. They looked really smart. They'd done fancy PowerPoints. And I didn't have that. I had six note cards. 
my dad's jumper up on my face. I thought, this either has to be really funny or I'm going to have to run out the door. And I, I took the hoodie off and I was kind of like, I know what you're all thinking of me. I'm very professional, but you've got seven seconds to make your first impression. And I can tell what you're all thinking of me, but I'm here to change perceptions and tell you that oftentimes seven seconds isn't long enough and that's not really the essence of the person. And I zipped the jumper off and I had this inspiring, wonderful t-shirt and the um, kind of stand that we had, I could hide my note cards so it looked like I didn't have any notes and that I knew it all and I was dead confident and it was great and, and they really liked it and it really worked well. But I'm um, referring to my notes now, you see that I can't hide. But um, now I kind of want to do and have a brand. I want to do workshops and training courses and kind of go back into schools and things and inspire young people to do something brave, do something different. Like I know that the sensible thing to do is to stay at school and to do exams and to do more exams and then go to uni and, and do it all because then you know that you're going to do well. Like you can't do badly from having an education. But also, I think that if you can mix both, then why would you not? Because I would have been in sixth year at the moment. Um, I did my exams last year and I took a year out to think, I need to make the most of this prize. It's a fantastic opportunity. And once you claim the prize package, you have a year to use it all up. So I thought, if I take my time to think about it, then I'll be ready and I'll have a business to do for when this prize gets accepted and I can make the most of it all. I mean, I am going to go to university as well this September to do philosophy, but I'd love to kind of run them both and just see if I could make something work for myself and kind of, the, the big dream is to just make millions and do what I want every day, wake up and read books and ha have a luxury life. But that, that's still, that's on the way. I'm not demanding that right now, but, um, a lot of the things that I learned, I've been through the ACORN initiative enterprise that Callum runs and also just through meeting people like yourselves. I mean, because of this prize, being able to say that I was the Young Entrepreneur of the Year kind of gives people an impression of me that then they think, well, she'll work hard, she's going to do well. And then because I'm quite young, then people tend to want to help me and think, well, no, I'll, I'll give you honest advice. Like not, I'll give you advice that will then benefit my business because you need to come to me, but like really tell me, look, this is what it's going to be like. And because I've worked it out that because of two people, I have met so many other contacts who have then led me on and on. And really the lesson that I learned was that people want to help you. There's so much free advice and you genuinely just have to ask for it. You don't even know, have to, you don't have to know where you're going to look for it, you just have to know that it's there and that people will give it to you. And to talk about the San Francisco summit, that's going to be this July and I think that's an important thing for me because deadlines, as hideous as they are, they are a good motivator for people like me because I kind of, I take on a lot of things. I'm like, well, I'll do that. Let me do this as well. I'll, I'll do everything. I think because I know that I can do it, but I don't factor in deadlines and the time that it'll take but um, the San Francisco competition is open for two weeks but the deadline for it really you have to have been trading for less than a year and a half by July and that's the goal for me I want to have my business running so that I'm eligible for this I mean it's a fantastic opportunity to go to San Francisco for business and I want to be the kind of person that has a business that I can say well yes I'm just jetting off over here on business you know I mean, I, I just think that'd be really great. And I know it's an idealised kind of business is going to be lovely, it's going to be like this, but I think it will be if you can make it like that. I think what I would be doing is really just focusing on the issues that people have. And I've targeted young people to begin with because it's a market that I know very well and it's a market that I can relate to and that I'm part of. So market research will be then dead simple for me because I can go out and talk to my friends and get them to talk to people they know and it spreads that way. Um, because I remember having a conversation with a lady and she was kind of like, who's your target? What are you trying to do? And I was like, well, everybody. Because I'm not saying that all young people feel terrible and all grown-ups feel fantastic because I know that's not the case. 
but I think that eventually my business could filter out and help a lot of different people because the courses I would like to do would be targeted more towards adults and the workshops would be kind of creative and inspiring for young people. I want to get people involved in working together and helping each other and just to know that you can go out and do something totally different and really mess it up and that's fine and that's a mistake and it doesn't matter and you can learn from it because it, it's not permanent. If you go out and make a mistake, it's not really going to ruin your life and depending on what the mistake was. But I think you have to get rid of the fear that it takes to do something because that's me. Like Part of the tracking that Shona and I do um, when we started, I was kind of like, well, I might do this and I think I would like to try this and I'm going to plan this and I could have notebooks of plans and things to do and chances that I was going to take. And I think it's only been a month or so and now I'm kind of like, well, this is my deadline. Here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I've done. And I'm taking my opportunities. Like I spoke on Friday and I'm speaking now and I just want that chance. I want to get out there. I want to tell everyone I've got massive plans for like the summer festival in Edinburgh and I'm going to have fancy leaflets and big street performances and I'm, I'm going to make this work. And um, the thing, one of my mentors told me that it, you have to feed back into how you feel about your business. So you have to wake up and think, how do I feel about it today? And I started writing it down for a bit, but then I was annoying myself with it. <laughs> but I do, I do keep thinking about it. And it's kind of like, I'd wake up and be like, well, I'm scared that it's not going to work. I'm scared that I'm going to spend all this money and not be able to make it work and then not be able to go to uni because I don't have the money and it was a big circle of things that I could put in my own way and I'm working back we, I went to uh, like a kind of it's a group in Edinburgh and they run at the beginning of every month and it's called live your legend and it's kind of like inspiring people that want to do business and we all get together and we really discuss like what we're trying to do and there's always a theme to every meeting in the month and the one I went to was kind of like about the issues that you think you have and why you think that's a problem and it, w it really opened my mind because it was kind of like well my problem would be is I'm frightened that it's not going to work and then he was like well why is that a problem and I'm like well because this fear is going to hold me back and it's making me not believe in myself or my ideas and he was like well, why is that a problem? So I was like, well, if I'm held back by this, then I'm not going to do it. And he was like, well, why is that a problem? It, was kind of, it kept feeding back. And there was a huge big spiral of why is this a problem? And everybody's business, like everybody that was there, the, after they went through the spiral, came back to because I'm not going to be happy and then I'm not going to enjoy my life. I'm not going to have a nice time or have food and... It, it did all boil down to the very basic food and be happy. And some people took more steps to get there than others, but that's the fundamental of what everybody is trying to do with their life, I think. I mean, like having families or having jobs and living where you do or whatever, it's all boiling down to you want to be happy. And I want my business to be able to share that with people and say, look, it doesn't matter what point of your life that you're at, but you can do it. You can get up and change it now. You can plan and change it and change it in a month. You can do it and it's going to be great. And you have to believe in yourself and then other people will believe in you. And it's all that one positive thing that is then going to change everything. And I've been reading a lot of business type books recently because I'm a big reader anyway, but I've started keeping a book journal which is really interesting because I just rate them out of five and then recommend them on to other people. But um, a lot of them have been really good. And there was one that I read and it was all about the law of attraction and kind of what you put out there comes back to you. So if you feel bad, then you'll find more things to feel bad about and then they'll make you feel bad and that spiral. But if you start to feel good and you put good things out there, then the same thing happens. And I was kind of sceptical about, like, if you ask the universe for something, then you'll get it. I was kind of like, well, no, because I want the lottery numbers. I want all this. I want that handbag. And it wouldn't quite happen. But I thought, 
it was the other day when I was at work and I was sat and it was quite quiet. I was kind of like, well, what do I want from the universe? I'll not be too difficult. I'll try something small. So I was like, well, show me something rainbow. And then I thought, oh, don't be so silly. I don't want anything rainbow. What is this about? So I, I forgot about it. And then later on, I was like, well, no, I need, I need to try this. What do I want? So I thought, show me something that I love, something that makes me feel great. And then I'm looking about for it, like, well, it's going to vaporise in front of me. Where is this thing that I love? And then I thought, oh, for God's sake, like, just get up, wander about, do some work. And so I forgot about it. And then when I went home, my friend Stuart was sending me messages on Facebook in a big panic. He was like, quick, get up, look south, look south. And Stuart's quite mad, but he is fantastic. And I'm like, what do you mean, look south? What is it? He's like, get up, quick. So I'm like, mum, which way's south? And I'm getting up, I'm looking out the window, and it was a double rainbow. And I thought, I absolutely love Stuart to bits, he's fantastic, and there's the double rainbow that I asked for. And I just kind of sat down, I was like, this worked. And the effort I put into asking the universe for that was minimum. It was a, I want something rainbow, no I don't. And then I forgot about it. And I thought, if that's all it takes to get what you want and to attract things, that you want to have in your life, then why isn't everybody doing it? Why are we not all sending each other positive vibes? If you know somebody's having a hard time, why are you not consciously making an effort like, please let them be all right, let them, sending them good thoughts. And I kind of, I want to encompass all this into one business. And I know it's kind of very ambitious, but I think if I start now doing my t-shirts and keep going, then it's going to spiral and it really could be the next big thing. And I'm not saying I am going to be Google, but I would like to be that well known. I would love for people to think, wait a minute, sense of self, I know, I know that name. And everyone just be talking about it or have something. I want to do notebooks, I want to have posters, places like this to go where people can have inspiring events and bring people together. Like I really am going to take over the world, I think. <laughs> Thanks very much. Do you wish for it to be signed today as well? Because if so, you've done a very good job. I did, actually. <laughs> have my sunglasses with me, <laughs> just in case. How awesome is that? Does anybody have any questions for Rachel? <laughs> okay, I've got, I've got a question for you. Okay. Um, it's fantastic that you read. What is it they say? Readers are readers. Mm -hmm. What a couple of books? You know, you mentioned you've read some business books. Could yeah. you tell us which ones you, you really enjoyed and inspired you? Yeah, well, the four hour work week was definitely one for me, and I felt like it could be boiled down to one sentence, really, or two, that was like, are you being productive or are you just being active? And that was the one part of that book that really stuck with me because I'm, I can be very active. I do a lot of planning and a lot of notes and lists, but not a lot that makes a massive effect to the business. And since I've realised that, I always catch myself on and I'm like, well, what's this going to achieve? And um, the other one wasn't a business book but it was with the law of attraction kind of it was called the adventures of a, Luct a reluctant messiah and it was by the same guy that wrote jonathan siegel i've forgotten his name um but it was kind of like it was a really nice wee story and it was just like if you think it then it will happen whatever you you think you will become and it was kind of like the guy thought well i can just melt into the grass and become a puddle and he did so, I, and I've tried that, it doesn't quite work, but we're, work, we're, we're getting there. Um, but I find a lot of, even fiction books as well, kind of the characters in that help for like my customer studies, my market research and things, even though they're fiction, like a lot of the planning and the research you can do. Like I wrote out um, kind of profiles and case studies for all my potential customers. And I think reading just helps you develop that and it helps you like relate to other people and that's what business is about really. Okay. Thanks Colin. Who in business um, inspires you? 
choose a few figures. Um, you see me, it's fine. Well, now that you've mentioned yourself, um, no, there's a lot of people, like obviously the big people with the big names um, inspire everybody really, but there's, it's the people that I've met through the Young Entrepreneur competition and things, um, the people that are quite well known or are nearly becoming well known, like my mentor, Romy, is fantastic and she's had a few businesses and now she's doing glass pool tables, custom designed and they're fantastic and I think she sold one to the lottery winners up north and it's just like I think she is one of my biggest inspirations because she's just she's always there and she's like well you can't be too ambitious just like you really she believes in me so much that I believe in myself and also I'm going to say Gregor that does the morph suits he he's great I really like what he's about and I remember we had a meeting and he was just kind of I'd sent him a few notes and he came at me with this, he just spoke and it was great. Like I love the energy that he has for what he does and I want that and I want people to know me. I want my three million Facebook fans. I want to be that big. I want people to be involved with what I'm doing. I love it and feel great. I mean, you can't feel bad in a morph suit. I mean, you are anonymous, but um, I just, I, I like it, I like the energy, and I like what his business says about him. Any other questions? On that case, let's thank Rachel again for that awesome talk. Thanks. I think you've earned a seat, so you can have a seat now. Thank you.